like. Welcome to the UK Vape Show, episode 286. <laughs> the show where other shows get their content from. Hey. Joining me today as normal is, of course, Mr. Aiden of the Little Bro Vapes. Oh, dear. We have Mr. Adam looking casual, hip. We don't snap his fingers anymore, Vic. That's All not right. how it works. Okay, I'm, I'm just old then. He's, he's a jazz man. <laughs> casual. Was last week you were a jizz man, wasn't he? Casual, for fuck's sake. <laughs> casual, hip and trendy. And of course, our guest is Mr. Matt from SMM. I'm definitely not hip and trendy. You're, you're the same as me. I'm not hip and trendy. <laughs> I'm getting either. old, man. I turned 40 this year. Oh, I've got five That's... years on you. Yeah, it's no that. I've got four That's... years to go till I'm 40. I've got five you years. You actually do really well. You've got no grey in your beard. Who? Who? Yeah, Matt's got no grey in his oh, beard. Oh, I definitely got a few. I'm going to say don't. See, I've got a lot. I've got that a way lot earlier. down there. I'm, I'm, all, I'm all right with the hair, although I'm starting to oh. go a bit bald at the back, but the, it's the beard that's getting all... Oh, dear. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm going bald at the back. I've been noticing it. See, I don't have, like, the bald spot on the back yet. It's just coming up. Yeah, he's catching not, up with itself. I would rather have just the bald spot in the back, because this just looks silly. But then again, you always wear a baseball cap, so nobody would notice. Yeah. Yeah. Always wear a baseball cap. Who are we going to pick on? That's, that's, that's really strange, isn't it? Because like you said, it's, it's like it started to eat its way back from there, yeah. hasn't it? And, you know, the sad and the sad and uh, uh, scary thing is I had a big forehead even before I started losing <laughs> my hair. Like in high school, they used to call me five head. <laughs> and, uh, and now, I mean, it's like a good nine or ten head. Because my hair used to, I have a scar right here. I remember my hairline used to be like right there. You could cover it when you were like in the 90s. It's just oh, mate, egg. that's what getting old's all about, isn't it's it? It's an egg. That's what getting old's all about. Don't worry about it. Who do we it pick ca- on? It catches us all. It catches us all. Who do we They used pick to call you five week? foreheads. They used to call me five bellies. <laughs> <laughs> they used to nick my dinner money and buy a bike. <laughs> 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 so here we go, and we will go with Adam since he's drinking something. Oh. Thank you. And while you're doing that, I'll do this. I- uh, it's all right. I'm only on tea and 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 some roller roller. That's all oh, I'm on roller. tonight. Roller roller. Other brands are available. Um, so I, I'm like I'm, it's all faithful now. GT Cloudpour GT with the uh, OG recurve on there. I've got some jammy uh, custard, which I will not call uh, jammy donut. I, <laughs> I, I, I filmed I filmed the review for this right, and I was doing. I, I must have done six takes i'm not even kidding where i went wilder west jammy donut it's not a jammy donut it's a jammy custard it's very very nice vapes a bit like that um the v sticking with the sq um dead rabbit because i thought you guys hell vape i know that someone questioned something maybe coming up later on but maybe not um about hell vape so i've got that guy in that, I've got some cinnamon roll from the Wilder West, which is really, really nice. I'm not going to spoil that one. That one comes up tomorrow. Um, and then, in in honour of Matt, I've got Matt's pa- Matt's passage uh, on the Tesla Y. All right, grow up, you two. Um, with some. Glad you're still enjoying my passage. I love your passage. You know still, what? Still nice and fresh. Oh, it's that silver drip tip. You you maintain yeah. a very clean passage, yeah. and I like that. Antimicrobial. I'm anti-micro- <laughs> How many it's... people can say they have a passage that's antimicrobial? Exactly, exactly. And How many nice people can actually say that they've had their passage in so many people's mouths? Exactly. <laughs> and it's, the, the thing is, it's so wide and so airy. I don't know how you got it like that. He said airy, by the way. It tightens up when it needs to. <laughs> that's yeah, the yeah. death that keeps on giving. <laughs> Nothing better than an adjustable passage. Uh, and in that, I've got some caramel shortbread by Wilder West. Had hashtag not sponsored, uh, but that's me. That's me. And that was Adam, Mr. <coughs> Mr. Retro Vape TV. On to Mr. I would walk 11,000 steps and <laughs> I would walk 11,000 more, except I fucking wouldn't. I'd just get a bus. Mr. Little Bro Vapes. Yeah, big shout out to everybody who has been supporting the 11, well, it's March the month, 11K uh, steps. Yeah, we've been doing it the last 11 days. Um, so please, it, oh, I'm just going to stick the link in. 
even if you can just um, spread that link out or if you can donate a little tiny bit, please do it. It's for an absolute great cause. And also get over to the Urban LBV. Watch the vlogs. It's an absolute giggle. Um, they so are, thank you very they much are for brilliant. all the support. They, they um, are absolutely brilliant. They have become an absolute staple of my day. And you need to Casey Neistat yourself and do a vlog every single day for the next 365 days. <laughs> yeah. It's a nightmare, mm. though, that. That's a lot of work. That is. It is. I, I did the Sober October in, obviously, in October. Uh, that were a, another one. I did, every day did a vlog. And it, I, I do like doing it. It sort of gets you into some sort of routine, uh, which, which is really good. Uh, but, yeah, it can be a little bit of a nightmare. Right, what am I vaping on? I'm on the new UD uh, Light pod kit from Lost Vape. In there, I've got some Billion Airs Nick Salts. That one is the Slush. We've got the Druga X Plus. In there, I've got some, this is really, really nice. Lush from Cornish Liquids. We've got the up to date Groose, which basically just stuck the Ursa chip in it. Um, if I put it into the middle, it might focus. Uh, with the new tank on top, I think that's I think that's the UD tank. Uh, in yeah, there, some the Wild UD West uh, again, not a sponsor. Uh, lemon and lime, which is quite nice. Then a little bit uh, elitist here. We've got the Jenna on top of the Vicious Ant Spade um, twenty one seven hundred. Yes, and that was sent to me by one of my subscribers, uh, Les Wardle. Big shout out to Les. He sent out both of them, and that turned up today. I was like, what? So yes. For that's more elitist than me, Jenna on top of a speed. The thing is, Aiden's going to walk outside one day and there'll just be a Ferrari in drive, delivered <laughs> by Royal Mail, and he'll be like, ah. He'll just be doing all the rest of his reviews sat there like a certain Mr. Trippers. Either that, I'll be coming from, from Chippy and somebody's going to rob me for it. Be, I'll, be, I'll be sat down there with peas all over the place going, God, I'm winded. <laughs> and that was... Oh, a bit of Peter that was Mr. Aiden Little Bro Vapes on to our guest, Mr. Matt. What are you vaping on, Matt? I have the uh, Focus. It's Gower 21 with Gower. the Druga RTA up top. The, what else have I been vaping? The Jackaroo Pod Ooh, Mod. I I've really like this. One. Yeah, I've been enjoying that. That came, in, that came in a while ago. Really good. And then the Caliber and G. Um, the liquid, I don't have all the liquid that I'm using out here, but in the Caliber and G I've been using, this is made by Five Ponds. It's Are they still the gold? I haven't heard of them for ages. Yeah, they wow. make they make 12 milligram in a lot of stuff, which I like in uh, mouth to lungs. So I've been using their fruit line. Their melon one is really good as well. Um, and then in the others, I'm using Nominom. Nominom, I don't know if you guys have heard of that one. But uh, I don't have it here. I totally, I forgot about these buffets. I'm rusty, guys. I'm sorry. The the, the thing with the the five pawns, they, they sort of fell, especially in the UK, when they were talking about diacetyl and stuff. I was going to say there were massive controversy with the five pawns over here. Like, yeah. Huge. And I'm sure it was the same over in America, weren't it? They had a bit of a... Yeah, I mean, back then, everybody was using diacetyl in their, in their uh, uh, dessert flavors. Oh, they, yeah. You know, since then, taking them out taken diacetyl out of everything but, but the, the uh, actual amount that was in there was mini minimal wasn't it yeah it was but minuscule. I, the the original five ponds flavors they're just okay for me i can vape them sometimes but this fruit line there's like four or five different fruit flavors in their fruit line is really good and it's not they don't like add sweeteners so it's not over sweetened which i don't like sometimes and that was mr matt i guess it's my turn usual setup um Kylan V2 with Rochford Projects, not the Black Vine, not the Black Vine, this time I've got Lemon, this time I've got Lemon Lush in it, yes, that one, I've got Lemon Lush in it for a change, just a bit of a change, you know, because I've, I've been vaping fucking Black Vine consistently for fucking months now, uh, Q-Mini, not the branded version, just a normal one, um, not in honour of Matt, because I'm vaping this all the time, Cog, sitting on top of Mike Vape's Mono SQ, and over here, I've got the Lost Vape Thinnema th with the Wolver. With the Wolver from Wolver. <laughs> Fucking Wolver. And before you start, Pav, it's Wolver. But yeah, with the Wolver, still the prototype version, I'm still... And so chat starts putting in Wolver. Come on, guys. Shut don't up. Let us down. I'm still, I'm still back and forth with Hell Vape with a couple of little minor problems with the airflow. This is my new tank, by the way, Matt. Oh, nice. It should be called the beer barrel. 
It does look like you, a bit like a beer barrel, doesn't it? What are you calling it? Wolver, like Wolverine, the, but the Ean's oh, been not Wolver, up. like like W O L V E R or, or yeah, W I L. Not Wolver. Not Spell Volver. like Volva, but with a W. W W U L V E R. Volver. Volver. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Did anybody else feel like they were on countdown then? <laughs> <laughs> You've got a six letter word, well done. Oh yeah, and in that I've got my own peach custard. Uh, I've got um hold on. Can't mention that because I'm testing it. That's Jeez. under ND8. <laughs> no, it's not. It's shut up, Adam. And oh, I've read it. It was in that. Yeah, it's a new tobacco juice by a, an old company in the UK that they want me to test out. So a little bit too much sweetener in it. <laughs> Pam, can I buy a vowel? <laughs> can I buy a vowel? <laughs> Do you have countdown in the U US? Do, do they because they take a lot of obviously English shows. Do we have what in the US? Count it's called countdown. They basically put loads of like words together and it's sorry, letters together and you have to come up with so many words. It's a bit yeah, like Scrabble. Right. Oh, it's is it like a game that you play or a game show or yeah, a game, game show. show, yeah. Gotcha. I don't think so. I don't, I don't think, think we have. Does, yeah. Maybe we do though, because I don't I don't really watch game shows. We might. To be honest with you, I don't either. I'm not, a, I'm not a proper game show fan. <laughs> I love it. I, I, I love our chatters. I love how they just go along and they just pop things in and you're just watching it. And I, I sometimes I find myself just sat there going, Volva, Volva. Shut vulva. up. Vulva. <laughs> 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 so, uh, have you got anything in the pipeline, anything new coming out? Uh, not like anytime soon, but I am working on a few different things. Uh, but I mean, th you know, like it's taken this thing right here took me like a year and a half, two years. And and like with so much uncertainty in the U.S., it's like the manufacturers are like yeah. a little slower, kind of wait, wait and see kind of thing. So I do have some stuff in the pipeline, whether it comes out this year or not. I'm not sure. It might, though. You never know when you work. Vic knows this. When you work with Chinese companies, sometimes it takes way longer than you would think. And then other times they're like, "Okay, we're ready. We're gonna we're gonna put this out next month. Hurry, hurry, hurry. We gotta finish it." Oh, I've, got, I've got a quick question for you, Matt, because I've I've actually got quite a few of your products here. I mean, I, I you might not remember, but I met you at Expo and, and I remember like you. That. Yeah, oh, yeah. And I do you know what? Out of all your products, I'm not actually just blowing sunshine up your ass. I really like your rebuildables, except for one. <laughs> Oh, hey, this uh, is going to be another uh, Mike Vape. So I'm going to it's have to not, explain it's not, it's, it's not, it's not. Obviously, it's bringing heat right out of the gate. Oh, throw it straight in. The, um, the theory. Oh, oh that's yeah. going way fucking back. Exactly, bad, exactly, exactly. I, do you know what? It, I want, the question that I wanted to ask you, were, out of all the products that you've made, what's your favourite and what's your worst? Because that's, you know, one that you think, I did a really good job, but I could have done... Better. I would say that that one, you're right. That one's my worst. Um, I'm I'm not going to take, well, I mean, obviously some of the blame is, is to me, but it was also yeah, a different yeah. time. You know, this was like yeah, five yeah. years ago. Yeah. But uh, at the same time, I didn't get complete 100% control over that project because I was doing it with Jabo. Yeah, so yeah. like, I didn't want that airflow control the way that we did it. Yeah. And uh, there was a few other things with the design and aesthetics that uh, that I wasn't super fond of, but it was kind of like this compromise sort of project. And it was also like kind of something new and different at the time. Uh, oh, oh are you completely innovative. Absolutely innovative. When, when you look at it for what it is, it was i can see where you're coming from when obviously yeah. there was a lot of, well and like, then they insisted on on up. shipping when we first designed that the, the notch coil remember had nothing yeah, yeah. to do with that device yep and then you know it was made for just like normal coils then they they shipped it with those big ass notch coils and yeah, they, uh and you needed way more wicking and so then it was harder for it to wick and it was just it was it was a learning lesson for sure. You know, oddly, out of all the projects that I've done, that one sold the most. Did that? <laughs> yeah. There you go. I mean, I and I didn't make a lot of money off of it. This, you know, I kind of got screwed on that one, to be honest with you. But uh, that's the notch coil. I'm still there. But yeah, the I mean, that one sold, I think, over a hundred thousand units. Ooh. The, the, wow. the notch coils as well. That uh, 
uh, Joytech really ran with them, didn't they? They went through a line of, of the notch coils. Yeah, and those were a little before their time too. Like the idea was cool. You know, obviously we've gone towards mesh and things like that. Um, and, you know, trying to find other ways to have more surface area heated. But just the application that that put into uh, the that an RDTA, I don't think it was a super great fit. Yeah, yeah. It was ahead of its time, though. That's true. Do you find with them notch coils, you end up with, with, with like, hot spots on them? I, the only thing I ever find with it is, is to be fair, out of a batch of, let's say, ten, eight of them will be, be splendid, and then you'll have two that the legs aren't soldered on properly, so they fall off. I'm just going to say, them. I haven't used a notch coil in about two and a half years, so... <laughs> what yeah, yeah, but, but me neither. <laughs> I no, no, used... no one has. That's that's the whole idea of, of my little shelf of goodies here. There's there's stuff on there that people probably haven't picked up in a while, and it was one of them that <coughs> the, the notch coils. Like like you say, I I was a mass when mesh first started making its rounds. I was a massive advocate for for mesh, um, and the notch coil is is essentially the the grandfather of of mesh to a but certain degree. Is, but like yeah. I say, out of out of ten out of a batch of 10 you've probably got eight that are really really good and then you've got two that the legs aren't soldered on properly so you try building with it wondering why it's not heating up and obviously there's about that much gap between leg and coil so but what would you say is your favorite product that you've made then i'm just glad you like my passage i love your um, passage do you know what when i picked it up the first thing i did is i couldn't wait to build it and it was it, it, like i said not blowing sunshine <laughs> up your up your passage but it's a it's a cracking rda my favorite are well, the Serpent SMM. Yeah. And, and to the guy who just said, Matt, are you gonna put something on your name on it after the fact? Go fuck yourself. Um, that's not ever how I've done <laughs> Sorry, any of my Tyler. projects. <laughs> who was it? Vaping trucker. Yeah, you're a fucking asshole. <laughs> anyway, um, with the I Serpent mean, SMM. Change. <laughs> with the Serpent SMM, like wh where I got the idea from that was you know, at the time there was, we were seeing a few RDAs come out that had dual sided airflow. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we didn't see any RTAs like that at that point. And so, uh, you know, I thought it was, I, I loved that style of airflow. I loved the flavor. It was a little more leak resistant because it wasn't a bottom airflow that we were usually seeing at the time. And uh, I think a lot of people liked it. Now, the only thing I regret on that is not being able to smooth the draw out a little bit more. But I really liked that one. And honestly, my other favorite is this mod. Oh, I love that. I'm still using mine. It's up in the studio. Up in the studio with a Crown 5 on it. Cracking mod, the guy. The, I yeah, was going to say, the I, thing I, with it is it reminds me very much, of, not not in, in any way, style, or shape, or form, or anything like that, but name. Can you remember when Orf first showed Orf, up? Orf, And everyone was like, Orf, 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 Orf. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, and, and all I've seen from people reviewing the Gua, or Gua, Gua, can you rectify everyone here on YouTube land of how to pronounce the name of the mod? Gower or go, but that's the thing is Gower? it's Gower or Gower, depending on where you're at. It's, it's basically like a bull in India. It's like a wild bull, right? So I was just looking for, it's very hard to name, uh, um, products nowadays because so many things are names are already registered and in order to be able to sell something in germany it's even harder like they there's so many yeah. names that are registered in germany that like th there aren't even any products named that yet but somebody went on there and registered the name so in order to like make sure you can sell it in germany you got to think way outside the box uh now and <coughs> i was just thinking of something because it's a bigger mod a lot of battery life and I just came across that. It's just a big ass, you know, Google it if you want out there. But it's just a big ass, like, wild bull in India. Nice. Right, I didn't actually review it. I saw Vix and I saw uh, Mike Bates on it. I love it with the C. Uh, yeah, the, it's a C frame. Yeah, well, it's, I, a I bracketed, it's a bracketed C frame. You yeah, don't really see do a lot. And I've been noticing there's a few mods starting to come out that are going down the road of C frames again. It's just yeah. one big continuous yeah, circle. Yeah, which I'm glad. I loved C-frames back in the day. So like, I, you know, yeah. most of them back then were high-end high, high end mods. Um, and then, you know, we then we saw, like, uh, Lost Vape start to make C-frames, you know, with the paranormals and, and stuff like that. But uh, I really liked the form factor. The the actual serpent was one of the first things you sent me, Vic. You sent me the serpent That's and you right. sent me the Maximus as yep. well, if you remember. That was a while ago. Yeah, about four years ago, that. 
that was a long while ago. I've still got I've still got the serpent, you see. So how long have you been uh, working with manufacturers, Matt? All together, roughly. No exact uh, dates needed. I mean that that uh, theorem was the first, and that came out in 2016, and we started working on it, I believe, in 2015. So six, five, five and a half, six years. There were one that snuck out that, that I never got round to in the first run, but I picked one up for for dirt cheap, and that was the. Um... He's got them all strategically oh, placed all across the day, hasn't he? He's I pretending that he's just picking them out, but he's, he's not where he's put them. He puts them all on the shelf like he actually uses them. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. He's done it like a chessboard. He did that with Mike Daves. <laughs> to be honest with you, the intake was where he was. <laughs> Intake's still there. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, don't because I can't find it now and it's going to bug me. It was the one with Blitz Enterprises. Oh, the the uh, the uh, um, oh what? my God! Why am I having a brain fart? Sorry, somebody was just messaging me about the vape shipping thing, so my 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 mind just got totally thrown off. Let me close Facebook here. We'll we'll we'll, we'll touch on that in a second because we were the talking hermetic. about that before we actually came live, but uh, we'll we'll touch on that. The hermetic. The hermetic. Yeah. I got a lot of shit for that name too. <laughs> yeah, I can see. I could. I could see why it's very, very medical. I think it sounds very. I don't, medical. I don't think they were thinking it that way. I think you were part of the Labour Party. <laughs> <laughs> but I. Do you know what? I. I. I only came onto that. Thanks, everyone in chat. Everyone in chat has just been putting it in for us as well. Um, <clears throat> but I only stumbled on that. Uh, I'd, I'd like to say pretty recently because I picked it up. I think it were six pound 99 from a from a website so <laughs> yeah i like the, right. the the hermetic was just another one of those where like at the time there wasn't a lot of like single coil rdas getting popular there wasn't. And it was, but it was just kind of a proof of concept thing like i wanted to try something different but uh it didn't that's another one that just did not sell very well very creative you are, aren't you? It's, it, I, I can tell that a lot of these products are, are a product of passion. So it is a case of, you know what, this is missing. So I'll-, I'll Well, I'll, when you, with vaping, you want to try something new and different. And so you kind of just throw some stuff at the wall and sometimes stuff pops off and sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. Have you ever had anything stolen? Obviously I don't mean like in your life, somebody- <laughs> not, like stolen, <laughs> not, not stolen, but like, uh, you know, obviously, like, I think people's brains work the same way. And a lot of times you're thinking, you know, for example, like the Serpent SMM, like I'm sure other people, because right after that came out, a lot of other RTEs came out that were so sort of similar. So it's just kind of like we all, our brains all work in this sort of evolutionary way. We're like, well, that was cool with that. So maybe we could try it with this. And like the original Dead Rabbit were very similar to that, weren't it? It was, it was one came out and then a lot came out and, and to hear Heathen and, and, quite a few other people talk they were they were just similar ideas that came out oh well we could snip the snip the coils under the legs and it's it's a mind mash of people all thinking pretty much the similar things yeah yeah but so i've never i've never been one of those types that like oh you stole my idea or something because i think that that very rarely happens with reviewer products you know obviously the chinese steal each other's ideas all the time all but the time. Uh, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, spy like, espionage on the uh, uh, yeah, the they have world. spies in each other's like you know uh, offices and stuff. Like it, that's totally legit. Like you'll you know, I mean, look at some t a company comes out with a new type of pod mod, and then another company has it out in a month, and like you know that they didn't just design that from the bottom up in a month. Like they had that thing going way before them. Well, it was like that whole thing with Vupu and Vapefly that went on. Ooh. Ooh. Oh yeah, I heard about that. Something about like the different, the it had three legs or something. Yeah, on the mesh. something about their new their new mesh coil, and it was it was all patented, and it was all hush hush. And then Vupu went, oh, we done it first. Yeah. Oh dear. Oh Vupu. Oh Vupu. Stop it. The thing about it is, is, is obviously in China there is anybody copies anything. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, uh, listen. You you look at you look at phone mobile phones and things like that, and the way that they've always changed one letter and a name, and it's it's become something else. And 
if it ain't got the branding on it, well, it's not an Apple product, but it looks exactly like an Apple product, and it's came out the Apple factory, and it's it's just the Apple. Have a look at the pineapple phone. Yeah, they don't view intellectual property in the same way. Just part, it's part of their culture. Like they they don't view it as like is like an insult to copy. Like sometimes they like it's almost looked at. Sometimes it's like you know you're and what's the word I'm looking for? Like you're almost like giving them props for using their design type of thing. Like yeah. Yeah. You're you're it's it's like more of a celebratory or like you're honoring their design by using it too type of thing uh, well do, top gear do, sorry do, to do you know do you know what one of the funny ones that i've actually seen from america this came out about a couple of weeks ago I, and i know it is wrestling but it was uh randy orton had gone and got his tattoo done you know like a full sleeve done so then they've used this sleeve obviously in the computer game uh the wrestling computer game so the woman who actually put, did the artwork on his sleeve have, is now taking him to court for the, the actual, is it intellectual property, whatever it is, it, taking him to court for because they used it on a computer game. I, I can't say how that would work, but she's literally taking him, suing him in court. Okay, I didn't hear about that. Bloody yeah. hell. Trying to so say that's that a she... tattoo that he's paid to have done to be put on his own arm. And because it's been used in a computer game, she's she's suing him. Weird. Would you, you do it, that? If, if you think about it, technically speaking, the computer game is kind of making money. I mean, a lawyer could spin it in a way that, well, the 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 the, the tattoo is part of his arm, and people are buying this game to look at this fellow and this fellow's tattoo, and she deserves money for it. You could Strange, spin it in a way. You never heard of anything like this years and years. I mean, in the years. U.S., you can sue people for just about anything. True. You know, and, like, it is weird because you think once that tattoo is on you, like, that's your art. You know, you own that. Graham, I'm, I'm going to sue The way Aiden. it looks like you only paid to borrow it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to sue Aiden because he's got a Superman tattoo on his arm. And yeah. Yeah. So have I. So. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, he's still good. Uh, just before we, we came on air, uh, which obviously we, there's loads of this um, happening over in America, obviously the, the actual mail ban, um, which news today has just come out is actually that DHL are now banning it over in, in the US. Uh, and you you said you've had a shitty day about it as well. Um, it, it's just going crackers, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you've got a lot of people scrambling, trying to figure out logistics. Like for uh, business to consumer... You know, so an online shop ships to a consumer, that's going to be really hard to navigate through. But there are some newer shipping companies that have popped up and said, hey, we're willing to take this on. But they mm. also can't cover every single area, like not all the rural areas. So, you know, like right now, like one is called X Delivery. And it's 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 a legit company. It's got a lot of people from the tech space, like they're good with logistics and stuff. But they could only cover about 70% of the country right now. So people like in rural areas, will most likely be screwed and have, have an issue. Um, and then, you know, with the DHL stuff, there's all kinds of implications there. Like some of the companies won't be able to buy from a, you know, have DHL ship from China to them. They're going to have to use different freight, you know, types of companies or, and there's just, you know, or China's going to have to put, you know, bring container ships full of product over and leave them in a manufacturer or I'm sorry, in a, uh, um, warehouse and, uh, and then ship from there. So it's just, everyone's scrambling trying to figure it out and i think it'll eventually get worked out i mean there's it, it, where there's a will there's a way like anytime you create a vacuum you know somebody's gonna fill it and they're gonna figure oh, out yeah. like you know they're gonna say well there's money to be made here there's this big hole in the market now i'm gonna come in and figure this all out but uh regardless it's it's a bunch of stress it's, it's massive, and obviously us over here, over this side of the pond, we're, we're getting loads of good news, uh, which is, is pretty good. But we feel for us brothers and sisters over there, over across the pond, because it is hard and it's going to push people back on the stinkers. But like you said, like when we, we had the TPD um, and they were changing all the bottles, we ended up getting the 50 mils. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I think, in, in a way, there's going to be something sorted out there in the US, even if it's a brand new company that comes up and works its way around of how to, how to sort it out. And hopefully that's the way it's going to go. Because if not, it's going to push it black market and it's also going to uh, push people back onto stinkies. Is it is it Gearbest that have still got a warehouse over in America? They're just out of curiosity. Because yeah, I think some of them do. I think there's a few of them. 
Um, but yeah, like anytime there's a demand for something, people find a way. And so whether it's in the gray area or it's illegal or it's legit and they're following all the rules, um, you know, it, it also wouldn't shock me if some of the other shippers, once the USPS clarifies the whole rule, which they're supposed to be doing, maybe they'll have a little, you know, they'll, because a lot of the shippers were just like, we're just not going to ship vape products because there's yeah. like regulatory uncertainty. They haven't seen the final rule yet. Maybe once that happens, they'll loosen up at some point. But, uh, you know, we could definitely have like a big supply chain problem for, for a while, you know, in, in, in this country. And hopefully there's enough product here now and, and people are still able to get to the things they need. So but there's still, also going to be people breaking rules. You know, there's going to be yeah. foreign retailers. Yeah. They're still going to be shipping here. But like I was going to say, that you, somebody's going to have to sit there and go through every single package that comes into the U.S. Well, yeah, if you look at how much illegal shit's shipped now through <laughs> through the different shipping companies, I mean, they're not going to be able to, to catch most things, obviously. Yeah, they don't have the staff. They don't have the staff to check every single package coming in. It's the same here for customs in the UK. Yeah, yeah. They just don't have the staff. <clears throat> Once in a blue moon, Vic, you might you might know have experienced this too. Once in a blue blue moon, I'll I'll notice like one of my DHL packages from China like was opened. Yeah, felt like it's very very rare. Yeah, yeah it's very rare. Happens uh, about one every twenty parcels for me. And yeah, mine's you... probably even less than that. But one every 20, usually in Stansted, Stansted Airport, because that's where customs is in the UK. And it's just a cursory glance. I mean, the, the one company I have fucking just problem after fucking problem UPS. after UPS. Yeah. I, yeah. Fucking same. UPS. Well, they try to charge you after the fact. Yeah. Which is which is weird. Like, And then you talk to the Chinese companies shipping it, and they're like, no, we just paid everything that they said we needed to pay including any of the import fees or whatever, but then UPS is always trying to charge you like 20, 30 bucks. They want more money and, from and you. And the, the, the thing about it is it's so like different prices for different people and they're charging you for their services. So they're holding it and then charging you for holding it when they didn't need to hold it. So they were like, I got charged, I think it was the Oxford he got sent over. I think that were, mine were about 42 pounds. But then there were another reviewer, Jules, uh, Mama Vapes. It is £140. £140 and the kit was even worth so half So it of was that. the same product. It was exactly the same as what I got, which it is £140, mine £142. That's why I've said to... That's why I've said... It's, it's usually Aspire that sent via UPS. And I, I basically said to Aspire, yeah. Becky, I think, it, I, I think it might still be Becky that's over there. And the, on, the only way that she could work around it was instead of items being shipped direct from Aspire Shenzhen. What's happening now is I'm getting shipped stuff the same as the other UK reviewers from yeah, Aspire from, UK. From, that way yeah. it's internal Royal yeah. Mail and I don't get fucking That happens with customs. a lot of mine now from Aspire. It comes from from the US. Like, yeah. It, but yeah, like Joytech and Elite was doing that for a while too, like using UPS. It's just, it was a pain in the ass. I but if you, if you get stuff from Geek, maybe I have no problem. It just turns up. Or oh, DHL, it's yeah. just straight through, straight through. We get yeah. straight through. We get bit. There's there's quite a lot of them as well that, that do it properly and put that it is a sample. You know, and, and I think that's the the, the way in the, especially in the UK. If you put down it's a sample and, and put it down that way, then it, it seems to go through absolutely perfectly. It does. So Vic, it is it's, uh, twenty-five to ten. It is Cassie's okay, questions it? time. Oh, yeah, fuck, so it is. Hold on. Let's refresh that. So, Caster's Questions. We all know what Caster's Questions is, folks. UK Vape Show Group on Facebook. Uh, people are popping their questions in. This first one is directed towards me and Matt. Specifically, probably because we're working with Hell Vape. Now that you've both worked with Hell Vape. Oh, oh I'm going to have fun with the answer to this one. <coughs> now, that you've, now that you've both worked with Hell Vape, what do Hell Vape do differently? in terms of their approach to working with reviewers that made you want to work with them over other manufacturers? You want me to go first or you are you going to go first? You go first. <laughs> um, there's different pros and cons to working with Hellvape. Gene, who is the owner, is probably one of the most intimidating uh, people in China 
that works for a manufacturer like you don't fuck with her like she no. <laughs> which i respect because you know like a lot of the the folks in china they just kind of like tell you what you want to hear and they she's good at communication but like it's like she's she's fiery she's like, straight she's straight to the point yeah she's a straight shooter <laughs> straight so that's point. good um part of why i wanted to work with them with an RDA was just because of their experience with RDAs and uh, and how many good ones they've put out. I think their manufacturing is good. And I have a good relationship with Jean, but I still wouldn't cross her. Like she scares me. <coughs> it scares me as well. Yeah. Uh, for me, the, the the major good thing about Hell Vape is they're not like EH Pro. They don't go bankrupt halfway through <laughs> working with them. Oh, did, the, did, did that happen with EH Pro? EH Pros went belly up, they're gone. But are they, but arteries still around, right? Aye, but uh, they are. But it was it was Everything got pushed it, that way. Yeah, it, it was between the release of the Kelpie RTA, and then the Kelpie RDA came out about five months later, and I was noticing something happening with the EH Pro that got the hairs at the back of my neck to stand up. When you see a company publicly saying that they're transferring all their intellectual property to a second company and all of a sudden the head of PR, the head of marketing, the head of social media and the CTO all vanish from EH Pro and then go to Artery. I'm sitting here thinking EH Pro is not going to last long enough to see through the second release of the dripper. They didn't. They went belly wow. up. So did they offer to release it under Artery's name or did they just nope. cancel the project? They just canceled it. Gotcha. That sucks. They still owe me about five and a half grand. Yeah, it's happened to me before with different companies. I mean, well, you remember that one company that uh, Twisted put the RDA out with a few years ago and they just like Ooh. never paid them a dime and just went a like they just they vanished, vanished. Yeah. I forget what that company was called. Um, oh, it was one of the oh, fuck. They put out a few RDAs. A couple of them got kind of popular. It wasn't Umi. They work. They usually work with Fagan. Um, who the fuck was it? I don't know. I'm so bad with names, man. I forget. So am I. I forget them all the time. Because we've been doing yeah, do you know what we're, companies. Uh, over the last couple of weeks, a lot of people have been talking about, obviously, women in vaping. And, and I've said that a lot of people who I deal with, even like the marketing side of it, a lot of them are actually women, women who, who deal yeah. with the marketing side of it. And it, 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 you don't get that many um, vape reviewers as, as women. You don't. Obviously, there's Wendy Vapes. There's quite a few over in the US. And we've got quite a few now coming up um, in the UK. But it is on the reviewing side it's quite male dominate dominated. But you know, like in the, the marketing side and the high end up in these these vape companies, you normally see that it is women, don't you? Yeah. Ben Porter. Yeah, for sure. I mean, especially in China, like a lot of them are are, yeah. are women that you work Tiger with. Tiger Tech. Tiger Tech. Tiger Tech, Sorry. that's right. Everyone's and you know, I would track. love to see more female reviewers. It's just one of those genres where there's a lot of women that vape, but as far as like the hobbyist, you know, Vanessa, she's a big vapor, but like, does she give a shit about the newest products that, that comes out? Or like, is she into building or like the newest tech? Not so much. Yeah. It's not to like stereotype all women. Cause there's definitely some that are, it's just, it seems like there's less women that are die hard into the hobbyist side of it compared to, compared to dudes. Yeah. So there we go. That was a good question, Mark. Mar yeah, like like Tam Vape said, women mixers are awesome. Absolutely. Like I, some of the best mixers that I know are women. Like women. their flavor profiles and being able to to uh, mix the, the 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 right amounts of flavor are really freaking good. And mm -hmm. I, I think that that's, I've heard that like in the food industry too, like women tend to be better, even like in whiskey, like a lot of the taste testers that whiskey companies have use women, women yeah. to do, to, to test out the different whiskeys because they're very good with, with uh, flavor profiles. Well, I know that Glenn, I know that in, in the main Glen Glenfiddich distillery, it's a 50, 50 split between the male and female testers. Aberlour Glen Levy, there was a point in time where about 90% of their taste testers were all female. I think it might still be pretty close to ninety percent. It is true that, the, the, the it's true that when it comes to when it comes to when it comes to the, the sense of smell and the sense of taste, the women seem to pick up the differences a lot more better than the men. For sure. And if you look at a lot, if you look at a lot of the, if you look at a lot of the the major 
not the smaller, the major e-liquid companies, you generally tend to find there's a woman behind it. Yeah. You generally do. Yeah. Well, they always a say that about behind every man there's always a good woman. <laughs> there is. And True. I'll tell you what, without Louise, I'll be absolutely nothing, my wife. I'll, I'll tell you now. <laughs> so, hi, Louise, and hi to my wife, who's upstairs. Yeah, Jackie. Jackie and... Hi, hi to Jackie. anyone else who's Hi, watching. Louise. Say that as well, though, you, Matt. You was you you were sort of a, a team together with with your wife, weren't you? At, at, at one point, obviously you're still yeah, a team and, now, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. She was in more videos back then. Like when once she started nursing school and then became a full time nurse, it just it was got harder and harder. To, you didn't have to, the you time. know, we, then we did that other channel together for a while, but it was always hard to like get her to like do it just because she was so busy. And yeah. then on her days off, she's like wiped out. Yeah. That's a tough job being a nurse. She works, yeah, she works 12 hour shifts. Ooh. So then, you know, after she'll do like four in a row and then need a couple days to re recover after that. Yeah. A lot of people have been asking, I'm sorry, Vic, I know I'm stopping the question, but a lot of people have been asking about Pud and obviously he's been flat working with, uh, obviously with the COVID and stuff like that. And that was the sort of reason why he took a little bit of a step back, wasn't it, Vic? Yeah, because Pud's a, Pud's a nurse as well. For the people that don't know that's watching this, Pud, Pud works for the NHS and what with the COVID no, stuff going on, he's doing stupidly insane long hours right now. Stupidly insane. That's why the cast has got three regulars instead of four. The door is going to be left open for whenever Pud wants to... For, 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 da, da, da. I've only had one pint. For whenever, it's the bottom set of teeth, they're loose. I need a new set, but the fucking dentist is giving it. Oh, no, you can't get in. I'm ratting about dentistry now, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't do it, man. Like, having to wear, like, the PPE that they wear, too, like, the yeah. masks and shit for, like, 12 hours at a time. I mean, yeah. Vanessa will come home, she'll have, like... Red. You know, her skin will be, like, raw yeah. and... Just, there will be like you know pimples and stuff, and it's just. Pud sent us a picture, didn't he, Vic? And yeah, it's his just face was red. so oh. won it all the way round, and oh. But we've said to Pud the door's going to be left open for him if, if it gets to the stage, and we've we've left Pud all the time he needs to decide. But if it gets yeah. to the stage where sometime in the future Pud says, "Right, guys, I'm taking a step back. I don't want to come back," then and only then we'll the get you in, Matt. We'll get you in, Matt. Yeah. So it it's going be to be the, the, U the UK and token, the, the UK and token United States person vape show. <laughs> <laughs> but only when Pud turns around and said, "That's it, guys. I'm not coming back." We may decide to bring in a fourth. But I think three was working out fine. Working yeah, I like right. talking to uh, uh, British and Scottish people more than most Americans, so I'm down. That's it. We're, we've got him. We've got him. You can, your accents, <laughs> your accents put me in a good mood. <laughs> good. That's, that's good. I will just write that down. Uh, <laughs> is being jotted up as we speak. I say, put it next to your passage. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a serious question from Gailey Bops. How you doing, Gail? See you in chat. This is a. This is a. This is a deep question for all. What has been the biggest thing you've learned about yourself during lockdown? Hmm. Ooh, that is a good question. I, hmm. as, as everyone knows in chat and you guys know, I work in the hospitality trade. I've been a head chef for most of my working career. And uh, one of the things that me and my wife have discovered is the joy of family, the joy of time, the joy of actually taking a back seat and going, you know what? We don't know what we're going to do. To, you know, when you're working in hospitality, you you spend five days, maybe six days a week doing your 12, 14 hours. I, obviously, Aiden knew what it was like when I was at my height, when I was, I, I was dropping shows and things like that. When you're working, just the same, your 12 and 14 hour shifts. And my wife was a front of house manager. She was working the same shifts. And, and you were taking two days where you had to fit family time, together time, and anything else that you needed to do, whether that be a, a, a week's food shop or something like that, you had to ram them into two days. Whereas since the first lockdown, we, we have just discovered each other. We've discovered family time. We've discovered all the stuff that we've missed for the 20 odd years. I mean, I've got two small kids still and a, and a, and a, and a 17 year old stepson upstairs, but discovering that family time and watching what other people have always had was was something absolutely massive 
for us. And it's obviously changed our mind coming out of lockdown as well. So that's my answer. Um, I, I, obviously, I, the way my work, my job, I work weekends, so I, I, I miss quite a lot of stuff as well because a lot of stuff that's done with the kids and the family is, is done at weekends. So, and, and Christmases, I, I miss a lot of that because that's where our main money is. So I, I, the, the family sort of side of it, yeah, I've got it. I've also learned about myself that I overthink. And I also, mm -hmm. not only do I overthink, I've also found myself that I over worry about what people think about me. And I think with this time, you know, like being able to sit in front of your co computer and stuff like that, I've not worried so much. If you don't like me, you don't like me. Because I used to be like one of these people of, why don't you like me? Well, if you don't like me, people are not supposed to like everybody all the time. So I've, I've learned self that I, I definitely massively overthink so many things. And I also um, worry a little bit too much if people like it. But yeah, the, the family time has been absolutely amazing. Cheers for your kind words, chat. You, you legends, absolute legends. Yeah, I think it, uh, it's, I've learned a lot. I'm an overthinker too. So like I've had to really try to keep my anxiety at, at bay because the more free time I have, the more my, you know, I, I go internally and like, and start, you know, I, I, I usually do really well, like in the moment, like, you know, once pressure or something bad happens, I can handle it, but it's more like the thinking about it. Like, yeah. Is, so I've had, I've had to work on that, but it's definitely made me way more appreciative of what I do have um, than, than I would say I used, I used to be just because, you know, you see that there's so many folks that got really hurt through all of this and, and uh, you know, lost their jobs or, or they're, uh, you know, went, ended up being homeless. And like, it, it's, it's made me very appreciative that I do, you know, have a stable life and you know Vanessa's still been able to work I've still been able to work and uh and uh definitely made me think more about you know inequalities and stuff like that in the world yeah and, and the, the things that obviously people have had to go through cheers Lee cheers Lee thank you Lee big big shout out buddy uh, Lee's got his own channel as well people go and check him out he's a lovely lad um, the the uh, like you said, people have lost their lives. The, the, the sort of people have had to be die alone, basically, sat in an hospital. You know what I mean? No family around them. What you what they've had to deal yeah. with. Yeah. The biggest thing the biggest thing I've learned is how lucky I currently am. Uh, in yeah. in the office building where the where, where the where the studios are, right? Because I I don't do recordings in the house now because there's no fucking room in this room anymore. So that's why I rented out office space. But in the office building, since the first lockdown in March, was it March? Yeah, since the first lockdown in March, there was fifth no sixteen something like sixteen no. 12 there was 12 businesses renting in that building half of them have went bankrupt just yeah gone like that and a lot of the businesses were in the entertainment that same as aiden they were in the entertainment they were event planning event management bookings that kind of stuff this second lockdown it's it's wiped out a lot of the businesses that were remaining and a couple of them were actually charities like disabled disabled help charities disabled children's charities things are starting to pick back up again but the building manager who used to work for the call center because the call center that worked for scottish power the gas and electricity company they left because they, they, they could they couldn't run a call center in a lockdown so the old manager of where well, one of the managers of the call center became the building manager. And he said, Vic, you're going to be the only, probably one of the only businesses left in here from pre-lockdown. And I went, you know what? You're right. Everyone else went bankrupt. And I'm sitting there going, I am in a very lucky position. Now, I'm not saying, I'm a rich capitalist bastard, because right now I'm just cutting even. I'm cutting even. The outgoings are the same as the incomings, but there was a lot of good people in that building running very, very good companies. And yeah, I mean, could you yeah. imagine like what it would have been like to be like a restaurant owner or something? Yeah, I mean, you know, and the, they already have slim margins. It's hard to make a business like that uh, successful. In, and in it's... the hospitality trade, it's been horrible over here because yeah. we've been closed. We've been closed, and I, there's there's people like myself who who just 
my, my wife was very fortunate. She she found a job just before the new lockdown started. But I've been on furlough for, for nearly a year now. <laughs> and uh, the hospitality trade is is actually completely on its arse at the minute over here. Um, it, it's been horrendous. I've seen so many people lose their jobs. Yeah. It, it, friend, friends of mine, head chefs, chefs who I've worked with in the past... Have, and things like that who are who are scratching for something now because that's all they've done sorry yep. now I, I don't know how it is in the uk are you guys still able to get um like unemployment benefits well yeah, you get that me you also get furlough now yeah. the, the thing with furlough especially in the if you just say you're a plaster or electrician and you worked out your van or you worked from your house and you went to work now they did it for if you had business premises and like business rates they gave you an actual grant but if you worked out your van and you're a plasterer or like my, mine entertainments, that sort of way, and you don't really have an office, which we, obviously I've got one, but you don't pay business rates because it's in part of your home, you didn't really get any help. But you, you did don't. get the furlough pay. The way, it worked, Sorry, the way it worked out here, Matt, if you were an employee, you were employed by someone, the government paid 80% of your wages. Gotcha. And that furlough scheme went on. Now, the problem, is, as Aidan was saying, is if you were self-employed. Small business people. S small business yeah. people. Now, I'm self-employed like Aidan, but Aidan has got his office in his house. Yeah. I've got my office in an actual office building. So when the £10,000 grant was released by the UK government, I got awarded it, but Aidan didn't. But Aidan's self-employed and he's in an office. But the office is, is, is in his house and the government went, well, it's not in an office building. What's the difference? Yeah, then what they did was as well, which was a bit strange, they went from like the March to the June. They didn't pay anything out. Yeah. You know, like your 80% furlough of what your books were over the last three years. They didn't do it till June. So you sat there from March till June. They shut all the pubs and everything so you couldn't put any work in. Mm -hmm. And they just left you. So it was odd. Another thing that I found as well, obviously I suffer from bipolar, I do like the fact that nobody knocks on your door and there's nobody on the streets. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I absolutely love it. it, it I just, because I, obviously I, I suffer from, from, I just love it. I love the fact there's nobody around, you know? It's there's brilliant. peace and quiet, basically. Yeah. I mean, I'm used to, like Vic, you know, I'm used to like working by myself. I work from home in my office. So it didn't change that much for me, but I do I have started missing being social. Normal, normally, I'm fairly cool at just staying at home. But after this year, like I have antsy to travel and go out and have drinks and stuff like that. So here's the big question, Matt. If there is a UK Vape Expo in October, I'm guessing you're coming over. I'm going to try for sure. Sweet. If I can swing it. Sweet. It's so, amazing that, that, that so many of the, the US reviewers absolutely love coming over here. Um, Mike Vape said exactly the same. Oh, I love uh, it over there. Well, it's because the Brian, expo, it's Brian be said the same. It's because the expos over here are fucking huge. <laughs> yeah, that expo is like what we had. In the, you know, the expos there are like what we used to have in the States mm. like 2015. Um, but don't really have any more. Also, I just love it over there because it's just the history you know your buildings are way older i love the indian food man i've been craving that so much like when uh last time i was there um the guys from uh, signature tips took us to a few different places in birmingham and it was just, oh delicious I, just, I want it so bad in fact they, they say that the curries in birmingham and, and bradford and that are better than what they are yeah back yeah. in india from pakistan yeah. Yeah. It's authentic. It's authentic. So, moving on. This is a good one. Reviewing based this one. William Dobson. How you doing? I think you're in chat, William. To all the cast, when you started out doing reviews, did you actually think that you would still be doing it and getting more involved with the industry? Or was you just thinking it was going to be a casual thing? I'll go first. When I first started, I thought I would last about a month and a half, because when I first started, I wasn't a reviewer. I was a vlogger documenting me giving up smoking. Then I turned into a reviewer. At the beginning, I thought it would last about a month and a half. You also look like a massive stonehead. I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, it's hobby. It, it starts off, you look at a hobby, don't you? And you're like, yep. you start doing it as a hobby, and it becomes something that you do in your little bit of spare time that you've got. And before you know it, boom. 
you're advocating for anything that you can. You're doing what you can. You, you're reviewing. Obviously, that will one of the reasons that I stepped away first time because you do find that if you if you actually let it, away goes your life. And it before you know it, you're watching, you're watching every single thing that's on YouTube. Yeah. You're watching reviews. You're watching live shows. You're doing a live show. You, the thing is, it, you do look back and go, "What was I thinking?" <laughs> We ha- we had three years of the last of the summer vapes, and that went like that. Yeah. When when we were doing that, that that flew part that flew by, and obviously we we were incredibly involved in the vape industry then. I mean, we all are now, but back then it was it was massive, massive, massive. Week in week out, we were we were reading the news stories, we were watching what were going off in the industry. We there were was so much coming products. out on there. Yeah, but. I, to be fair, no, you look at it back then and you think it's going to be a hobby. I don't mind doing it for a little bit of fun. And no, you don't realize how far you're going to go in the industry. Yeah, I definitely didn't think that I was going to be deep into it. It was really just a spur of the moment thing. Like we had joked about it a few times. And then I remember it was the win- win- in the winter and we were bored. And one day, like we went, like, let's just do it. We went to Best Buy and bought a, bought a, a webcam and a uh, cheap microphone spent like 200 bucks and just went with it and then didn't think anything was really going to happen. And then some, you know, it started taking off and it's just kind of gone on since there. But yes. then, you know, we've had so many like ups and downs in the industry, especially in the U S obviously we're like in 2016, I didn't know if it was going to last 2018. I didn't know if it's going to last. Like there's been, and, and I'm still here, but I, I definitely like have more of a, global viewership now than i used to it used to be mostly the u.s but now it's like i get as many views from the philippines as i do from the u.s yeah there's been a lot there's been a lot because mike vapes mentioned that as well he's getting a lot of views from the philippines yeah do you Mm. for me it's shut up because he's releasing an rda there called the bangkok bangkok (laughs) fucker for me it's thailand really i have a new one I, i have a new one Russia. Russia? Yeah, Russia. Yeah, Russia. Quite a few for Russia. I am not kidding you. Over the last few weeks, I've been seeing random views coming in from Russia. And, like, I'm not talking 5% of the analytics. I'm talking 55%. Ooh. I know, like, obviously, it's when you go through your analytics, you can see some of your traffic sources, and a lot of them were websites that... that Unless, like, them. one of the companies is buying views... For your channel because I, I, they've done that to me yeah before. yeah i've had i've had i had it in the past with california vaping they bought a load of views for yeah some like they don't tell you they're gonna do it but then all of a sudden you notice on two of their brands videos it doesn't yeah. happen all the time but like no, no. it's a smaller company shit um, why don't they do that for me <laughs> california va- california vaping i had about 30 subscribers and they sent me a load of juice over right and like like you've said before about tagging videos obviously my tagging wasn't very good back then and and, and everything else. Yet every single video we're getting 1,500 uh, 1500 views on it immediately. Right. 167 likes. And I'm like, <gasps> I've hit the big time. And then you realize. Jane Dodd from Shy Tots. How you doing, Jane? Hi, yeah, Jane. Yeah, just for the record, I have never bought views for my own channel. Neither have I. Oh, no. that's it. That's it, Matt. There'll be drama. There'll be videos. We've <laughs> done everything now. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> um, but yeah, like my t- the top three countries that watch me is always Philippines, US, UK, and then Canada's underneath that, and some of the other uh, uh, Southeastern Asian countries. Malaysia is usually there. Um, some of the other Germany is there and stuff. But it's, it's always the top three are US, UK, uh, Philippines. Well, for me, it's UK. For me, it's UK, US. Although the US is getting close to being number one. UK, US, Thailand. I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why, but it's Thailand. Obviously, I, I started off. My brother, obviously, Solo is a reviewer, and obviously, I had a mini stroke. I've been vaping from 2006, and I went on straight away as a caster with Adam and my brother on Last of the Summer Vape. So I were a caster before I were a reviewer. So they, they, them two were like every week coming up with a new device or new juice and stuff. And I thought, I'm on this show. And I keep showing me RX two hundred off, and I thought, <laughs> I thought I, I, I quite fancy doing this. So I, I started the, the reviewing. I didn't know how long it was going to last. Uh, I really enjoyed this side of it, um, and then it did 
four four and a half years later and I'm still here and I, I enjoy every little bit of it. Well, it turned into a job for me. And I, I, I when I in fact this show that you're watching right now, episode three hundred is getting damn close. It's gonna be it's gonna be hitting within the next couple of months. When I first started this show back in twenty fifteen, it was still a hobby with me and Gwen, who's there. Who would have thought that, like, in 2021, it'd be a full-time job, I'd be renting office space, and I'd be knee-deep in the industry? It's like, wow. Uh, You've got to well, think it's... about the, the the reboot of this show, which you did, obviously, from the previous lads, um, is, is a year old this April. That's right, so it is. That's right. That's right, yeah. The reboot's going to be a year old in April, and we might end up hitting the 300th episode in April as well, so... Big giveaway! <laughs> That's if you don't fall asleep for the next six weeks. Yeah, thanks, yeah, yeah. thanks, Eden. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, Eden. <laughs> right, moving on. Somebody said that Thailand likes you because you're mistaken as a lady boy. It's bank. It's the Bangkok RTA. Don't talk about it because it's what's coming out after the vulva. It's the Bangkok RTA. And then the clip. Yeah, we can't talk about him. Non-disclosures. Uh, and to be honest, he's got to pay a bit of money to Mike Vapes as well for the Bangkok because he came. Yeah, he came out. He, 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 yeah. it out, didn't he? he blurted it out first, and everyone ran with it. Adam, <laughs> I, why? Why? I, I want to say thank you to everyone who's using the turtle emoji. Uh, <laughs> the legends. I keep on seeing him flash up, and it just makes my it warms my soul. So this next one's from Kieran Doyle, and it's a good question, but it's a scary one. All casters, if the vaping industry was to cease, apart from the usual juice coils and batteries, right, what else would you recommend stocking up on? So if the vape Armageddon was to happen, apart from the usual, because everyone would stock up in juice, stop up, stock up in coils, stock up in batteries. Is there anything else you would recommend people stock up on? Nicotine and cotton. I was going to say that. Well, you don't need to stop uh, yeah, rebuildable cotton. stuff for sure. Yeah. Um, and and if you had to mix your own, yeah, for sure. You know, nicotine. All, all, although I'm sure it's stuff like that, there would be, be ways to get it even afterwards. But well, you yeah. could trade it with cotton. You could trade it with cotton. It's one of them things that I I I know for a fact that we very rarely think about things like that. Obviously, everyone thinks about wire, thinks about coils, thinks about uh, your screwdrivers and your setups and stuff like that. But one of the big things is cotton. How many times have you come to it in your drawer or in your vape space or anything like that and you've got everything that you need except for a pack of cotton? Yeah, but the yeah. thing is, even if like it was to, to completely go away, you'd still have like the Japanese cotton squares out there because those oh, are yeah. used for other things. I, and tampons. I've, I've seen Nick, Nick and Oboy OC did it with a tampon. <laughs> It works. Worst worst case scenario, use tampons. Hey, yeah. do you remember back in the day where people were like boiling cotton? Because oh, I remember that. They, they would get like the uh, the uh, bleached cotton balls and then they boil them. I remember doing that a few times. So if you think about it, tampons would be really good for mesh, wouldn't they? They're big enough. You can just mesh. put it in and have <laughs> Yeah, just pull it through with a string. To, to be well, honest with you, if you think about it, they were the first shoelaces, well, wouldn't they? Bit. Oh, for fuck's sake. Get your vape five year tampons. <laughs> Shh, Vupu have just uh, just patted, they've just gone like that. Yeah, Vupu, <laughs> Vupu's listening, they're, they're taking down notes now. <laughs> <laughs> Who are we going to move on to next? Mm -mm. Oh, here's a good one. Craig Gomez Brown. What do you guys do to relax outside of YouTube slash work, etc.? Uh, before I got really old, I used to play a lot of football, but um, I play a lot of, well, I did before lockdown, uh, snooker and pool. I, I, I'm a, I, I like gaming. I do a bit of gaming, and me and the wife literally binge watch a show. And, and that's about it. I mean, we binge watch so many series via lockdown and everything else that that's it. Downtime, you just need it. Whether it be go over to the pub, go over anything else, but yeah, that's it. Literally, I'm a gamer. I like playing Ark. If anyone's ever played Ark, Ark's incredible. Um, but if I'm not gaming, I'll just binge watch a TV series or reading. Sometimes I haven't read in forever though. So yeah, I'm I basically sit on my ass. <laughs> you know, I I game sometimes. I go in and out of gaming where I play yeah. like die hard every day for a couple months. Then I then I won't play for like a month. 
Yeah. Um, I love whiskey. I love <laughs> cannabis. <laughs> um, binge watching TV shows. I love true crime shows, but also like just good series, you know, yeah. as well. Um, uh, yeah. and, do you know what? When, when I was younger, I, I, I used to smoke it. Yeah, I don't think I could do it now. Weed? Yeah, I, I really don't think I could do it now. You yeah. got to. I'm not an all day user by any means, but like if you you get used to it and so you're not like so blazed to where you're paranoid and freaking you know, <laughs> starting to see shit if you. But like I found I, I dose myself properly. Like I, I'm not a big I dose myself properly. <laughs> big green for like that. <laughs> I'm no, you can do, no, but like in the US, we have it, it's legal in so many places. So you can get edibles in doses. Yeah. You know, exactly. You know, you can get uh, drops where you know exactly, okay, I need to give myself half of a dropper full of this because if I do a full dropper, I'm going to be way too high. So there's way, there's easier ways to like dose yourself now to where you know you're not going to go overboard. You know, when I were in my 20s, I always thought, you know, like later on in life, they did that man versus food. Mm -hmm, yeah. You know, if, if they'd have done that when I were in my 20s, I'd have been a millionaire now. Because I'll tell you what, as soon as I used to get hammered, I could eat as much as you like. I could just Oh, like, I love food. Yeah. Oh, man, I, I'd have just ate the lot. Yeah. I'd I'm on a diet right, right now because I gained 40 pounds last year. <laughs> but I Let's love, talk I'm about a food. food for a little bit. And before we had the kids, the one, my favorite one was the nine o'clock. You know, like you just woke up, you know, like just had that. And then you put a documentary on. <laughs> You know, like like hippos giving birth, and they'd be crying because they drowned him. So, oh man, Lou, wake up! You drowned the hippo. I can't believe I've been watching this for an hour and a half, and now the fucking hippo's dead. Somebody Come asked on. me if I fish. I used to fish a lot more than I do now, I'll have and a look, I ice fished. But uh, I'd like to start fishing more again. I oh, usually. Fishing. I usually do that during the summer. Also, like in the summer, it depends on the season here in Montana because the summers are beautiful and there's a lot of hiking, there's lakes. Vanessa's mom lives on a lake. And so there's a lot of active outdoor stuff to do. But in the wintertime, unless you ski, which I don't ski anymore, like you're just stuck inside. Because you get bad winters there. Yeah, not as bad as they used to be. It's definitely, we don't get as much snow as we did like 10 years ago. Probably something dealing with global warming. But still, you don't want to go outside. Yeah. Like, it's, you know, that, it's that same here, though, in the UK, we don't get the winters that we did. I remember as a kid walking to school and they were just like, you're in snow constantly. Yeah. And it, you don't get that now. It's, it's quite warm. Although it's this, winter's be, this winter's been a bit nippy. Just a bit nippy. Okay. I definitely love hiking nature. That's very relaxing. It's good for your anxiety. Yep. I don't like nature. Too many bugs that bite you. Too many seagulls. Some fucking seagulls. <laughs> fucking picking up a head. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hate seagulls. <laughs> that wasn't even a seagull. That was a crow. What a run, run, fast as you can. I'm Vic and I'm a backpack man. <laughs> you see I love that? that video. If you see that, I like, love that was... video. Fucking hate oh. seagulls. So Bad good question, reading. Craig. Good question, Craig. Uh, we're going to move to next. I'm going to ask this anyway because it's a good enough question. Uh, Ewan Haynes, have you any plans to review the following? Paramour mod, not being sent to me. Screamer, that's being sent to a select few. XRPRTA, that's being sent to a select few. Death Wish mods Leviathan 250C, 50-50 with that one. What's the XRP RDA? The XRP RTA, it's a UK thing. RT. Who did, who fallout, does it? Fallout vape. Yeah, one, fall, Fallout vape. Slat. I think it's... E-Sig 1. E-Sig 1, yeah. Fallout vape E-Sig 1. But I don't think everyone's getting the XRP this time. I think Fallout vape are scaling back the amount of review samples they're sending out. So half of that list, I'm not getting it. I can tell you that now. I'm not getting it. Yes, madman. <laughs> um, John, yes, I do own guns. Ooh, ooh! It's just it's it's one of those What's things. I'm not like a guy? diehard gun nut, but like in my state, just about everybody has guns. You yeah. can even carry conceal carry a gun without a permit here, which I don't do. I'll tell you what. If they did that in the in the UK, that'd be just one piss up that you'd not want to go to. Yeah, but end up just shooting each other. Everybody <laughs> be, honestly, it would literally be like your Yosemite Sam, like that. <laughs> I keep mine locked up in a uh, in a safe. Mm. 
Ours would be probably one of them beer coolers. They'd be sat around there with a gun just stuck in it. You know, like the big thing, hold your cans in. I, I, I grew up around guns. My granddad used to shoot, and I grew up around guns. So, like, you get here, we get taught the fear of the gun rather than the keep it keep it safe, keep it close to you. So we get, I got to shoot when I was younger, all Winchesters and things like that, really big shotgun, powerful shotguns. And it literally is. It's so scary when you... I, and you can just imagine over here, there wouldn't be people in barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know what my mum would like with a tea towel. I'd, I'd oh. hate to see with like an AK-47, you know what I mean? You're not back. Aiden Lewis crew, because you always shout you by your middle name as well, don't we? Aiden Lewis crew, bang! <laughs> see, the funny thing is here, like... Well, I grew up in Seattle, which is pretty, you know, it's a pretty urban area, and no one had guns there. Um, I've never like, seen Frazier you know, with a gun. Yeah, like very, very rarely did someone have guns. Maybe somebody had, like, was a hunter or something, but it was rare. But then, like, in the rural areas, like, everyone has guns. And they carry them. Like, you're in the safest part of the country, really, but then you're the ones that are carrying guns, you know, but... They'll say, well, it's safe because we carry guns, but there's just less people. That's why why it's safe. Yeah. That's the good thing as well about your police as well. Obviously, they've got guns. We haven't. So, obviously, they say stop or we'll shoot. Ours will say stop or we'll say stop again. <laughs> <laughs> and if we're feeling really risky, we'll pepper spray you. We'll pepper spray you. And now we've actually got them electric things as well. And yeah, all the, the people around you. Teasery things. Kinky. Yeah, teasery things. Next question is from Vapor Bunny. Hi, Bunny. I think she's still in chat. Question for Matt. This is directed to you, Matt, from Vapor Bunny. With the vape industry all but destroyed in the US because of lies and information, do you see any hope at all for a future revival? Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, the difference between the US and the UK is, I think, I mean, obviously we have, there's a lot of differences, but I mean, we've had billions and billions of dollars spent against, you know, vaping here. Yeah. We have people like Michael Bloom, Michael Bloomberg, who's dedicated like 50 million or bill, I think it's billion acts. No, maybe it's million. But anyway, there's so many anti-smoking, anti-vaping groups and they're all together here. And then there's lobbies that hate us with the pharma lobby. And because your guys' healthcare system's different and, uh, and uh, just the, you know, way you, do scientific research is a bit different. Like ours is just way more corrupt and there's way more money involved. But do I think vaping is going away here? No. Um, I think that we're, we're starting to see it already. There's going to be a lot of consolidation. There's going to be less companies. Mm. Um, um, you know, as far as like less small liquid companies and stuff like that, but, uh, I don't think they're going to be able to kill it. And just like we were talking, I think it was, earlier or was it on the show or before we came on the show where anytime a vacuum opens up there's a way to fill it there's people that come in and look yeah, for yeah. ways to to fix the problem and look for the loopholes and how to do this and how to do that so um i don't think vaping is going away but it's definitely uh it's definitely changing as i mean and like you said it, it's, you can just follow it where it is can't you I mean, here's the thing that the, the, the U.S. can only ignore. The U.S. can only ignore Public Health England, the Royal College of Physicians, the Royal College of Nurses, the Royal College of General Practitioners, the Royal College of Midwives, Cancer, Cancer Research UK, Stop Smoking Services England and the U.K. government for so long. Because the pressure's mounting. Yeah. It's definitely mounting. Oh, for sure. And... and they're even starting, you know, all of a sudden now in some of these states that have really cracked down that have flavor bans and stuff. Oh, the smoking rates are going back up or people are smoking again. Like yeah. maybe, uh, you know, there, there's, I'm starting to see more articles like that. And so, you know, it's going to be a long road. Just if you look at how long, I mean, marijuana has been illegal for, for decades and decades, it, it's just very hard to to get people to change their perception on on some things and so um not saying that those are one to one but i mean marijuana should be legal in every country just because it has a there's a lot less risk there compared to alcohol and other things that are legal nice. um but uh i, I think it's going to happen but it's just it's a slow process and we got to get a lot of these boomers and stuff out of office and have the newer generations you know that have a little more open minds uh, uh, come up. 
Yeah, how, how old is uh, Joe? What was he, about 70-odd? Biden? 70? He's, oh, yeah. he's like 78, I think. Yeah. He's old. It's not great to get a president in at that age, is there? Yeah, he's old as fuck, man. I think that might be one of the reasons that, that the UK government's... I mean, okay, it's, the, it's a conservative government, which is about... Ah! But David Cameron was young. Boris Johnson is relatively young in the grand scheme of things. I mean, that's... Piers be... Morgan's not that old, is he? Because he'll be up next, bless him. I uh, highly fucking doubt the get Piers Morgan. To be honest, the most seventy-eight-year-old. I'm, 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 this is only a joke, by the way. I don't want any tweets. My, about yeah, it. Um, don't, the, don't, the, the, the majority of seventy-eight-year-olds are trying to turn the television over with the fucking glasses. <laughs> you know, like the, the, the glasses uh, case. You know what I mean? Well, I also <laughs> think that part part of the difference between he, here and the UK is like we tend to like view things way more like puritanically. Like you know, we started the whole war on drugs and like. We, we yeah. it's like an all or nothing thing in the U. It, it's you can not quit unless you 100% quit. In the UK, they they seem to embrace harm reduction a lot more and not like a zero sum game where like, oh, yeah. you switching from smoking to vaping, you're not quitting. You're just changing one addiction to the other. Maybe so, but you're also saving lives in the process. And the UK is okay with that because of their the way their healthcare system works and and whatnot and. Uh, in the states, people take way more of a all-or-nothing kind of view on it. It seems like we we had this conversation with Mike Vapes uh, because we are not a privatized health uh, care service. Obviously, you've got to pay your insurances and things like that. Over here, we're not. It, it's, yeah. it's a it's a public service. So if you're poorly, we pay international insurance throughout our lives during our working time to cover that. If you break your leg, you go in, you get a pot on, you come out. You only pay for any prescription drugs that you need or anything like that on top of it. But uh, we we don't profit as much from death as as you do over there. That's that's the be all and end. No, all it's of absolutely it. that's one hundred percent how it is. You know, and I've uh, obviously like socialized medicine has some downfalls too, but I've always thought it was a superior way compared to uh, to compared to for profit medicine. Just because yeah. when you start profitizing health, it's you not it you're muddy. not putting the you're not putting the patient first anymore and so obviously in the uk it might still come down to money where they yeah. think hey if people vape instead of smoke we're going to save money but they're doing a lot it's a lot better it's a, than than what's happening here there's they're still getting to the right point you know yeah yeah as opposed to how we are here that was one of the major things that came up when the when the science and technology commission first met after TPD2 came into effect in the uh, midway through 2016, when the Science and Tech Commission sat down for the first of the three meetings, the head, the chairman of the Science and Tech Commission, this is a cross-party commission, uh, Labour Party, Conservative Party were in power at the time and still are. I think there was a representative of the Scottish National Party. There was somebody from the Greens there and somebody from the DUP and the Liberal Democrats cross-party and i think I, I can remember the head of the science and tech commission saying at that point in time 1.9 million vapors that's 1.9 less or 1.9 million less smokers who are putting pressure on the national health service yeah and he got a round of applause for it actual round yep. of applause cross-party so it's, well and you would think that they would embrace it i mean you know, some other European countries aren't as friendly towards vaping mm. as the UK is, but a lot of that is just like they're just like way so. more influenced by the WHO. Yeah. And like Bloomberg has his tentacles in the WHO as well and uh, controls a lot of uh, what's going on as far as tobacco control there, which is unfortunate. Whereas the UK just ignores the WHO. <laughs> we do actually. Well, you got to think what where the WHO is funded from. Yeah. You know I mean? Yeah. Yeah. World Shell Organization, that should be their nickname. And it, it was quite, it was quite apt uh, as well, and quite a coincidence, wasn't it? That obviously the the England Health had put out how, how it were now ninety seven percent safer. Yeah. And then literally the week later, they're putting out another press conference saying it's going to get banned. Yeah. That's what the WHO are now pushing for. They're pushing, they're pushing who? for the the, the, the the who? Who? Yeah. That's what they're pushing for. They're now pushing for the banning of basically open systems. Yeah. Well, and they were the ones that got uh, India to ban e-cigs. Yeah. And, uh, yep. you know, it's, it's, it's pretty gross. And unfortunately, the WHO should just be funded by every country, like every country should pay, pay dues. 
but then they also take private money like mm -hmm. Bloomberg's and others, special interest money, you know, pharma involved money and stuff. And so <clears throat> it's, it you, gets you, a little... you know, yourself, they've sat down there and they've had a meal together and it's the, yeah, we'll, we'll push that out. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Of course, yeah. Bloom Do you think down. Matt, you know, like over, you know, say, I don't know, say 30, 40 years time to look back at this, what they'll actually look at it, you know, like, I'm not trying to bring it into, you know, like JFK and stuff like that. You know, like they'll look at it and, and think, Do you know, we've done something wrong here. Yeah, I think that they moment. will. I mean, I think that there's going to be so much um, science and uh, also enough vapors that have been vaping for so long to, to where they cannot deny whatsoever the, uh, the, the harm reduction benefits. So I, I think at some point it's going to happen, but it's things happen slowly, you know, like, yeah. like I said, look at marijuana. I mean, 20, 25 years ago, people were like starting to say, yeah, marijuana is not really like that bad for, I mean, it's not great, but like, it's not, it's not killing people. People aren't beating their wives when they get high. And a lot of the reefer madness stuff was way overboard, but it still took them like another 20, 25 years to start legalizing in some states we don't have it legalized everywhere in the country i know you guys don't either and so uh it's just they, they move really slowly on this stuff well thank you because UK. they're smoking it <laughs> <laughs> well, i think in the uk the latest news is that the 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 conservative and the labor party for that matter they're talking about decriminalizing it not making it yeah. legal yeah, yeah. but just doing it about that just decriminalizing it so well, they, yeah. they, they moved it, didn't they, to a class C, but then they moved it back up to a class yeah. B, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. Well, um, Mexico is about to uh, uh, legalize it as well. They're they they have they're probably going to be voting on it in the next couple of weeks, but it looks they, like it's going to pass. They've they've been flirting with it for a couple of years since they since they made it available medically mm. here. We we don't have obviously your, your dispensaries or anything like that, but you, in certain subse subsections of the NHS, you can pick some up for, for angina and and real real uh, stressful problems. You can pick mar uh, medical marijuana up, um, but they've been flirting with the idea of actually because it, 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 to be fair, you're right, Matt. It's it's not one of them that's going to cause problems. You're not going to go and beat your wife if you just had a joint or anything like that. It, it's it's the fact that it takes up more police. To, to cover it yeah. and keep keep people off the streets with it than it would to just go, it's legal. Do Because what happens is you de-stigmatize it. And once you de-stigmatize it, people go, well, I don't need to. It would just be like Holland everywhere. Everyone will just be... Yeah, really it just makes sense. I mean, you, you have to get to the point to where when it comes to drug policy, where you know we're not eradicating drugs. They're not yeah. going away. And so you at least with something like marijuana, at least a lot of people will use that as a substitute for other things. So for example, I got hooked on opioid painkillers years ago because of my back so and it I. took me eight years to get off them. Yep. And cannabis was the, was the main thing that helped me when, when I was getting off of them. And so, you know, there's a lot of people that might, you know, instead of drink as much as I do, I'm not going to drink every night. I'm going to use a little weed instead. Like they're going to substitute and it just, you know, you might as well just regulate it, tax it. And, <laughs> uh, and and put put some common sense rules in place and let people have it. So we've got five minutes left. We need to do a giveaway. Oh, I'm just thinking though. I don't think Mexico really got to worry about the uh, the marijuana. It's the cocaine that needs. To worry about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they've moved on from a lot of the marijuana growing. Like now, it's like coke and other hard drugs. Yeah, yeah. The good so stuff. stuff. They started now. here. They're now here. The hard and, stuff. and they make fentanyl there and stuff like that. So what I need you to do, Matt, is pick two sets of numbers. The first number is one, two, or three, and the second number is one or two. Oh, two. I'll tell you what, when I were a stoner, I'd have been fucking way confused at that. <laughs> <laughs> two and don't one. ask me about my maths. Two and one. Two and one. Can I do this without getting up out the chair? Right, and so while, while Vic has a search under this desk here, what we're going to do is we're going to help this poor struggling... Um, vape reviewer out <laughs> a little bit uh, Stuart you awesome person uh, obviously everyone in chat is already going to be subscribed to you but if anyone in chat is not subscribed to Mr. Matt from Suck My Mod or SMM as it now is uh, get yourself over there I, I'll tell you some, some very very beautiful stunning stunning reviews I love your little artwork through your review 
Um, oh, thanks, man. So, it, Stuart, I know you're knocking around in chat. Stuart's cracking with a link, and he will throw one or two out there for you. There we go. Thank you very. He is fast. Stuart, he's absolutely yeah, he's He is brilliant. fast. It's like that. The moment you go, Stuart, he goes. He's the link meister. Done. Right. Let's get Nightbot up and running here. N I G H T. Also, people, do not forget as well. I just press the in there. If you can spare a little bit, we're doing the eleven thousand uh, steps march of the month. It is in there, people. If you even if you spare a pound, if not, spread that link out as well, please. And obviously go over to Matt. <laughs> Let's make this like he needs it. One. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting more. Everybody subs better subscribe. He's getting more subs. You promise, Let's Dick promised me if I came on here, I would get twenty thousand new subscribers. <laughs> Well, apparently Viking Vapor says we're going to get you up to 400, so we've, we've got a target. We're going to go for it. Well, well if it's something like me trying to hit 3,000, I've been sat there for on 20 for the last God knows how many weeks. He's doing me head in. So that, it, it, it seems to go up and down. I just hate YouTube. Yeah. What would you say? I, I'm, I'm 20 off my 3K, and it's been – it's up, it's down, it's up, it's down. I just hate YouTube at the minute. Ah, uh, yeah. Before, one of the things that I do want to say, before the giveaway gets rolled, there is 363 people watching this right now and only 96 likes. So I want to see as many likes as humanly possible, as humanly possible, um, because that does help us get out into the ether. And that's before it gets rolled. That's before it gets rolled. Come on, we can get that up to at least 200. Exactly. I fucking highly doubt it. Maybe 374, apparently. But if we can get 200 likes, that would be epic. So, Matt's picked this. Wenak Stylus from Geek Vape and the Aegis Max from Geek Vape. And, of course, another sponsor. We're going to throw in a little tub. What are these? These are Fuse Clapton's 2x26. Gage. Use little Bro Vape's tent. <laughs> <laughs> got to get your code in there, don't you? you got to get, get your code in there. So, tub of proper coils, Aegis Max and the Wenak Stylus from our fantastic sponsors, Geek Vape, and of course, John from Proper Coils, who I think is still in chat. I think he's still in chat. And he's we'll a lovely do... bloke as well. Make sure you get yourself over to Proper Coils. We'll roll it in a couple of minutes, because we're overrunning slightly. Oh, there he is. Well, slightly. So we're at 174 likes. That's 26. 26. Check that out. Quick maths. 26 <laughs> away. Man does trees. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, now, Matt, you're probably thinking what we're on about now. We, we tried to calculate something last week on the show, and oh, he yeah. just, like, was massively out of it. I, how the hell? He didn't I, I was calculate. like, I, I was a million miles away. Absolutely <laughs> million miles away. <laughs> It, it so, was like literally he had to take his shoes and socks off. Count everything. Every <laughs> every last bit. Every last bit of me I had to count to try oh, and find it. I, I still got it wrong. Keyword. I forgot the keyword. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not rolling. They can't enter it without the fucking keyword. The keyword is that. I made, it a, I made it a long one. Type it once, once only, more than once you get automatically deleted from the draw. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, now you're going to proper... Why don't you just do an SMM? Too short. Oh, do you have to have so many words on it? Yeah. Uh, let's how, do you, how are you doing the, the giveaway? It's it's Nightbot, so I've got Nightbot running in oh, the background. Oh, gotcha. It's a keyword system. You can enter if you want. Yeah. <laughs> He's probably got a fucking warehouse full of these in the back door somewhere. <laughs> That would be a dick move on my part. The Wenax <laughs> is pretty good, though. I like it. It is, actually. The Wenax is, is a good cat. Is, is that the K1? No, it's the stylus. Ladies and gentlemen, 15 away from two. Was that the original one, then, or is that the new one? No, the K1. No, it's the new one. Yeah, the K1 was the original. The stylus so came out. They did the stylus, didn't they? The Wenax stylus. Then they did the C1, and then the K1. The K1, yeah. I, I lost track with I lost track. Geek vape, do, they, they do seem to be concentrating on the starter kits a lot these days. I've been noticing that from them. Yeah, 
I did just get that. Uh, I haven't opened it yet, but the obelisk. Oh, the the op the obelisk, which is the the in the in belt lipo one. The kit. Yeah. Um. What else did I get? A sub um tank from them, I think. The the, Z tank. the obelisk tank. Well, the obelisk C yes, tank. It's yes, it's a it. tank that it's a, it's the tank that comes with the kit. No, but the tanks look different because the Z one, like the airflow came in at high, and the obelisk, I think it came comes in low. Does it? I'll have to look again. I haven't broken into them yet. Yeah, because there's an NDA. It's like March the thirtieth or something or after the thirtieth when we were meant to review it. Something like that's, that. Anyway, that's a good question as well. Are you going to be doing a, a twenty-one seven hundred? Am I going to be doing a twenty-one seven? No, he said Matt. Yeah, uh, you beat the Geek Vape uh, to the dual twenty-one seven hundred. That's what he said. Oh, gotcha. Because yeah, I don't think Geek has Geek Vape got a dual twenty-one seven hundred out. I don't think I they don't do. Think so. It's been the a problem is if you were going to make an Aegis dual twenty-one seven hundred, it would be really be fucking big. Big because of you know having to make it IP sixty-seven rated. It's it. The dual eighteen six fifty is already a fairly large mod for a, yeah. for a dual eighteen six fifty mod. The legend. It's a big mod for an eighteen six fifty dual. Yeah. Come oh, on, ladies and gentlemen, we are eleven away. Eleven away from two. I, 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 I always I always thought that this solo could have been like a single twenty one seven hundred. Oh, you mean the original Aegis? Yeah, like the yeah the Aegis solo that that you know when they did yeah, the two they in made one the, swank? They, they made the Aegis Max, which was a single twenty one seven hundred. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I lost track with the Aegis line because I it's... know it's so hard. Cheers. I'm, I'd like to see more. I, I'm I'm a big advocate for for more twenty one seven hundreds. So am I. Yeah. More battery life. Lost there vape we go. Three lost, away. Lost vape. If you're watching, one of these in twenty one seven hundred. Thank you. Yeah, that'd be good. It would be. So what you got coming up on your channel, Adam? Uh, coming up on the channel, obviously I'm waiting for the new PC. I, I explained to you guys before, and I did put a post up on the Buy Me A Coffee um, about the new PC coming. So when the new PC comes, I am going to be back to the reactions. But for the for the final bit of the week, I'm going to be doing uh, the rest of the week at uh, the Wilder West. And I say rest, I'm going to be doing three of them this week because I can't hack doing 10 juice reviews all in a row. <laughs> I, do you know what I set out the other night? And all that, right, I'm going to get some reviews filmed. I'm going to do these these juices, and I'm going to do all ten. And after the first video, we're having to do it in six takes. Oh, uh, it's it's the jammy donut bit. It was the jammy donut bit, and I was like, "We've done it. Two hundred two. Hey, two hundred and two. Wow, I'm surprised we got over two hundred likes." Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. If you can keep them likes coming in, that is very, very nice. But the reactions will be coming back. Uh, I, I've got the result of the poll, which was Vaping with Twister 420 to do. I've got a, another couple of viewer requests as well. They've sent me a couple of bits and pieces um, to look at. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to be a reaction-heavy week as soon as the, the PC comes and I can get rolling with that. So... Um, but that that's about it. I'm just going to get some nice little reviews out. I had a bit of a dicky tummy over the last couple of days and also I couldn't get really in front of camera. So, But that's it. Uh, one of the things that I do want to say before you remove uh, me and start speaking to someone else, uh, if, if anyone in chat can, can go over to Urban LBV, right? I was saying this before the show. I, we, me and my wife have this routine now of now you're doing these daily vlogs that we will sit there and watch them daily and be like, what's Aiden up to? He's right. doing this for an absolutely amazing course. And honestly, you can see the pain in the poor bloke's face <laughs> when he's like sat there going, you can imagine him just going, no, I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> Luke, stop making me. Um, but get yourself over to Urban LBV. Obviously, he wants to get to a thousand subscribers so he can go live on mobile before the end of March. If you're not already subscribed to the Urban LBV, get yourself over there. Go and check. Thank it you out. so much, bro. It, it's cracking. Uh, but yeah, you can take away now. What have you got coming up on your channel, Aiden? <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got some bits and bobs, a couple of juice reviews. I've got uh, the the new Groose. We've also got the new um, Titan V2 Steam Crave as well. That's come through. 
and some stuff from Inikin. Nice. Over to the wonderful Vic. Are we going to roll this? Yeah, we're going to roll it. I can't remember what I've got coming up next week because I'm old and I forget things. So I think I've got two kits. I've got the kit from Lost Vape. I've got the pod kit from Lost Vape. I've got... Oh! I've got the... The Van de Vape Berserker Mini V2. There's been that many Berserkers getting released. I've got the Van de Vape Berserker Mini V2 coming up next That's week. a good one. That's probably my favourite Berserker. I've also got the Expromiser version Expromiser. 5. I think that's coming up next week as well. So that's two mouth to lung tanks up next week. And I think I've got the Van de Vape Jackaroo. That thing you were showing, Matt. That. Yeah, this is my next video up. Yeah, I've I already got that. filmed it. I've got that really good up next weekend. That I've been thoroughly enjoying that little kit. Thoroughly the enjoying it. The coil heads for it are fantastic. Yeah, really good coil. It looks right. really nice. I like that like dimple effect as well, isn't it? Yeah, this is the G10 panel. Really but good it's, little kit. It's like light. It feels lighter than like the Geek Vape IP67 plasma. It is. it is. Surprisingly long battery life on it as well for a kit of its size. I was surprised. Yeah, like I've been using nice the. The 0.3 ohm coil in here at about 40 watts, and I get like 250 puffs off of a off of a single charge. Yep. Is anyway, that the one with the rebuildable um, section to it. I've seen a video. Yeah, where there's an there. RDTA for it as well. Yeah, yeah. Nice looking bit of kit, that. Okay, let's roll this up for grabs as the Wenac Stylus, the Aegis Max, and of course, a set of proper coils from our wonderful sponsor, John, from Proper Coils, and, of course, our wonderful sponsor, Geek Vape. Let's roll this and see who's won it. Roll it! <laughs> Come on, pop up. Leader Vapor Anderson. There we go. Oh, wicked. He's a really nice bloke as well. He's, he's got his uh, new channel out there. He just quick reviews. He's a really, really nice bloke. Please get yourself over to his channel. Give him a subscribe. I'm so happy he's won that. He's a right nice bloke. So, Lee, stupid question, but I've got to ask it. Do you want it? Do you want it? Oh, that's wicked. I'm way happy at that. Do you want it? Congratulations. Oh, he's a right nice bloke. But I love it when things like that happen. <laughs> oh, it warms you, doesn't it? It warms you warms to your, your, your cockles, kid. It warms you to your cockles. Yes, he wants it. Okay, Lee, what you need to do... Is I really need to get a shortcut key to so I didn't keep typing my fucking email address in. Vector at uk, And I've got a really long email address as well. I might need to switch that to a .com or something. Email victor at vapingwithvic.co.uk with your name and your postal address. And I'll get that lot sent out to you sometime in the next couple of weeks, roughly speaking. So there you go, congratulations Lee, and a big thanks to our wonderful sponsors Geek Vape and of course John from Proper Coils, because he does make proper coils. I never win these things, I think it's rigged. <laughs> I know. Oh, it's brilliant, that, isn't it? <laughs> I do a Wednesday show and that's what you get constantly. Rigged! It's rigged. <laughs> rigged! So, should we wrap this up, fellas? No problem, Lynn. <sighs> yep, wrap it up. We will pick on... Eden first. I thought that was going to happen. I just have this feeling <laughs> deep down in my bones. Hey, it's been absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much, Matt, for coming on, mate. Um, you're an absolute star. Um, it's been a good old giggle. Uh, thank you very much, everybody in chat. You've been absolutely wonderful. Like Adam said, if you can get over to the Urban LBV channel um, and, and support, if you can, what we're doing for Prostrate Cancer UK. It is killing me, if I'm honest with you. Uh, and Louise is doing really well. And a big shout out to Paul McCartney. Sorry. Big love to everybody. Make sure you join us next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. So from Jackie, who happens to be Adam's Yeah, no, wife, I was just reading that all right. Who happens to be Adam's wife. God, what is the point in having a husband on panel and I don't get to win? LOL. See? <laughs> See? You don't give your, your wife any vape, vape stuff? Oh, she she's got whatever she wants. She's got the pick of everything. And <laughs> doesn't sound like on the that. passage. <laughs> that, yeah, the only thing I won't let her have is your passage, and that's it. <laughs> I I think she deserves my passage. Jackie, would you I like that passage? Bless her. Um, <laughs> but she has the pick. She has the pick of anything. So uh, yeah, that's what they all say. I'm kind. Or I think she's like going on to the big 
She's they, basically on an ego battery and a pro tank in the other room. Uh, that's hers. <laughs> oh, wow. Anyway, moving on. Adam. Uh, ladies and gentlemen in chat, you are absolutely cracking. Thank you very much for the turtle love and all of the bits and pieces that you put in chat. Sorry we can't get round to them, but obviously, as you've seen, nice and busy, but it does mean the world when we get to read them. Massive shout out, as always, goes to the speed typer that is Stuart, who oh, yeah. the moment you instantly say anything, there's a link in chat for it. So, And the rest of the spanners, you're all absolutely epic as well. Thank you, everyone, for the likes. We are currently at 205 likes likes which is epic you are you are legends uh matt honestly it's been an honor I, i've not seen you for a few years since i've seen you at expo and it's lovely as always to catch up with you thank you for coming on tonight and, sure. and vic you, you you're a star so you go first and that was adam and on to our guest mr matt i don't know how to follow that but i just appreciate you guys having me I, I miss human interaction, so I'm always down to talk. <laughs> and I and I miss miss everybody over in in the UK. So it's it's good times chatting with you guys. This was fun. We should do it again for sure. Well, there's always yep. October. In yep. fact, here's the thing: Are you thinking maybe of going if? And it looks as if there could be an outside chance if the Hall of Vape was going to go ahead. Are you thinking of heading over there? I don't know, because that's kind of a short time. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. But I definitely want to... If they're going to do a, a UK Vape Expo in October, I, like I'm going to try my hardest to do that one. It looks as if there's going to be one, because by that by that point in time, everybody in the UK will be immunized. So there'll be no fucking reason for a lockdown. I'm going to try to lose like 20 pounds beforehand, and then I'm just going to eat <laughs> Indian food. I'm, I, that's all I'm going to eat, Indian food. Your guys' traditional food's kind of hit and miss. <laughs> Fish and chips is lovely. Hey, I mean, fish and I, chips is good, but I mean, like you know, just all those roasts and great gravy things that you got, but you oh, don't put salt in them. Oh, um, of course, we put salt in them. You're not eating them right. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. I mean, it's it's you, not you, that you, it's not the traditional American foods all that good either. But the deal is, we'll all go for a curry when you come over. We'll all go for a curry. And we'll yeah, see we'll, and yeah. Just, yeah. I do like English breakfast. The English breakfast oh. minus the beans. Well, you don't, I don't like the be beans. Gassy in the morning. <laughs> oh, you got over the beans with it. Anyway, I know, but like, it gives me the farts, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's the black do. pudding that does that. <laughs> hey. <laughs> anyway, that was the UK Vape Show episode two hundred and eighty-six, getting ever closer to episode three hundred. This, this, this shows a dinosaur, but it's still on its legs. You know, it's not like a dead horse sitting there taking ideas from other shows and talking about us all the time. Anyway, moving on. Big thanks to our wonderful hosts, Aidan, Mr. Little Bro Vapes, Adam, Mr. Retro Vape TV, and of course, our wonderful guest, Mr. Matt from SMM. We don't have a clue who the guest is going to be next week. We haven't thought that far ahead because this show's never planned. We all know that. Big thanks to Stuart, the Linkmeister. Big thanks to Gailey Bops, to Vapor Bunny, and of course, all the other spanners in chat. Big thanks to all of you watching, and big thanks to everyone who's watching this on the replay. Catch us next week for a guest in the UK, that's the way we're doing the guests. One guest from the UK one week and then the week after an international guest. That way, it's people getting a bit more exposure. That's it from us. We will see you all next week. Bye! Don't forget Matt's passage. Hey! I'm just...